Hello, welcome to Bernoulli's Law of Fluids. This is a lecture on fluid mechanics, uh, specifically fluid dynamics. Fluid mechanics is divided into two basic uh, branches. Fluid dynamics, which is the effect of a, a moving fluid, and fluid statics, which is the the effect of a stationary fluid such as in the ocean that's a stationary fluid and the pressures that exist if you dive or uh, or you're in a submarine you know those are static pressures static static uh, fluid rules that that govern that now a very oversimplified version of Bernoulli's principle is that the velocity of a fluid is inversely proportionate to the pressure application perpendicular to the flow. So as you can see, high velocity, low pressure. Uh, now that arrow could be going either way. Uh, so if I have uh, in the bottom, if I have a, a low velocity, I have high pressure when you think of a garden hose if I have it hooked up to the, the spigot and I turn the spigot on but my sprayer is not on the pressure builds up in the hose and when I let the water flow it reduces the pressure this is uh, an example here the middle of the hose is constricted and the the flow of the water becomes greater so this is a very oversimplified version of Bernoulli's principle, but the pressure application in a liquid is very internal, like atmosphere pressure. Atmospheric pressure exerts pressure all around us, and if the atmospheric pressure were decreased, we would blow up like a balloon. Well, the, the internal pressures that are in a pipe that's constricted when you have an increased flow of fluid the, the internal pressures are such that these bubbles would uh, increase their volume because there's less pressure and that the fact that there's small there's larger bubbles there is is proof that Bernoulli's principle is actually quite true if the atmospheric pressure were less you would blow up like a balloon this might even be taken from I don't know total recall the old one back in the 80s well, what happens is if I reduce the pressure, uh, let's say we're, this is like we're supposed to be on Mars and there's very little atmospheric pressure on Mars. And, you know, if you go into the Martian environment, the theory is that you would uh, blow up like a balloon, that you would, uh, your eyes would pop out and your, your, your blood would boil and you would, you would become like a cartoon and when uh, you would die because you don't have enough oxygen and you know your whole body would just simply become inflated because there's less pressure so that was the the movie on that uh, well you can see very clearly here um, you have three different types of flow you have a medium flow on the left, low velocity fluid, has high pressure, forcing fluid up the tube. The high velocity fluid has low pressure, forcing fluid up the tube a small amount because there's less pressure. And then you have very low uh, velocity fluid, and that's forcing uh, very low velocity fluid has high, very high pressure, forcing fluid up a tube a large amount. So the only reason that water is being forced up the tube is because of changes in pressure. So the greater the velocity of the fluid, um, the lower the pressure. So they're inversely proportional or indirect. There's an indirect relationship. Uh, another example would be, uh, you know, you, you know, you have the, the wider uh, pipe where the velocity is slower, it looks like the 
looks like it's on 5, the velocity is on 5, and the pressure is on 5, it looks like, uh, from the from the uh, the readings on the scale. And then when you have fast pressure, let's say it looks like it's going up to like 7-ish, uh, then and the pressure goes down to 3. So the velocity and the pressure is looks like 6 and 6 and then I increase the velocity to 7 and the pressure decreases to 3 and then the, I raise the velocity again or lower the velocity and then the pressure increases as well uh, again here's another one same idea uh, low velocity high pressure high velocity low pressure uh, the so this is kind of repetitive, but uh, when you have, when you have, like, if you have a hose hooked up to a spigot, I'll say this again, and you don't have the sprayer on, so you you know that the that the that the hose is going to bulge out a little bit, and when I let that spray, when I pull the sprayer. And it sprays, and it lets the water flow. Then that, then that pressure decreases. Same idea with if there was a leak there. If there was a leak in the hose, well, it would squirt very high. But as soon as I let the water flow, the the uh, the squirt the squirting would be much less dramatic. If there's a weakness in the wall of a garden hose and the hose is turned on but the water is not allowed to flow, for instance, that's exactly what I said, you turn on the spigot but the sprayer is closed off, a bulge will form when the water is allowed to flow, uh, the bulge will shrink. So low velocity, high pressure, low velocity, uh, high velocity, low pressure. So uh, the next slide is going to be a nice visual on that. Uh, the, the one hose, the water is flowing quite dramatically. The, the hose looks good. And the other hose, the, it's not flowing. And you get this bulge in the, in the uh, hose because you know, it's not, it's not uh, flowing well. So you have the high velocity fluid up top, uh, low pressure. In the bottom you have this low velocity fluid and you have high pressure. And the bulge caused by low velocity fluid flow causing high pressure. So the bulge is, is caused by this Bernoulli's principle. If I have low velocity fluid, then it's going to have high pressure. Now, the if you think about your arteries, if your arteries uh, weaken, see this bulge, and, and that could burst, couldn't it? Well, if that were your arteries, that would be a, a aneurysm, an aneurysm that could burst, and you would you would you would not survive that. Uh, if you have arterial sclerosis, where look look at you have this narrowing of the of the uh, artery, it's narrowing. So when the artery narrows, you're going to have this uh, you know this increased uh, increased uh, flow, and it's going to weaken the walls of the you know the artery you know the the so it's going to create high 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 blood pressure because you're weakening uh, the walls and you're you're weakening the flow the it's not being able to flow the this flow is actually is actually slowing the velocity of the blood is slowing so you create this this um this kind of uh, this high blood pressure uh, hypertension as the arteries age they become clogged with fat 
and plaque that constricts and narrows the vessel slowing blood flow thereby increasing pressure and causing a aneurysm and an aneurysm is if you if you think of what a hose is where you have that bulging uh, of the hose that's a that bulge is an aneurysm uh, if you played basketball or football and sometimes the when it's an old basketball or an old football you get this kind of bulge uh, in the basketball well you're gonna have to get a new basketball you know it's gonna change the bouncing of the ball so you know that that little quote-unquote aneurysm uh, has to be taken care of so this is if you look at the the the, the picture all the way on the left uh, this is called the descending aorta. The aorta is the major uh, artery coming out of the heart. And it branches. See at the bottom it branches. It goes down either leg. It goes down through the pelvic section of the center of the lower trunk. And then it goes in each leg. And they're called femoral arteries when they branch off like that. And if you get a weakness in the... If you get a weakness down there, just by the branches, where you get this bubble, that's called a abdominal aortic aneurysm, and you know people die of this. So you know you gotta you gotta eat eat well as a young person, so you don't develop these things uh, as an older person. Now let's talk about how lift. You know, is there a similarity between what we talked about relative to uh, garden hose physics and and aneurysms and applying it to lift well the the pressure that you know the velocity of the air going over an airfoil and that's uh, a wing uh, a fixed wing a fixed wing aircraft and you get this uh, the, the top of the wing you get high velocity well, high velocity, you have low pressure. And you have uh, lower velocity on the bottom of the wing, so you have high pressure. So you have a, a, an upward vector that's greater than a downward vector, and that's called lift. That's how a plane actually flies. It flies based on the high velocity, low velocity, etc. So let's look at a, a more specific uh, type of drawing here's a here's a wing called an airfoil and to the you know to the right the wing is uh, the wing is moving left to right as the picture shows and the direction of the fluid which is the air is right to left and so the airplane is going from left to right so the thrust would be the forward motion the drag or the friction the air resistance would be the left vector and then the lift would be up and the weight or the gravity would be down. So look at the shape of the wing. Look at the top of the wing. Do you see that that shape, the top of the wing, is actually uh, longer than the bottom of the wing? Do you see that? How the distance is actually longer. It's longer. See the central axis? Well take and put your finger on the right side of that central axis and trace trace the path of the wing and you'll see that that's much longer much much longer than the bottom of it it's a much it's much longer distance so do you see that when the molecule a goes from right to left as the air passes as the wing passes through the air that the the molecule a will go a longer distance very simple do you see it yes or no and then the bottom is going to the molecule B will go a shorter distance now very important to understand you see on the left where it says time is equal do you understand that if the wing is passing through the air both molecules will go from right to left in the same amount of time that's important so now molecule A molecule A has a large distance over T 
and molecule B has a smaller distance over T. Now look at the T's, they're the same for both molecule A and molecule B. Now it's important that you understand that the time is the same. If you don't understand, please ask me and I'll go over it more in class. So a large D over T is a large V, okay? And then a smaller d over the same size t is going to be a smaller v. So the velocity, the velocity of the fluid is is greater on the top of the wing. Greater velocity, lower pressure. So the pressure on the top of the wing is low. The pressure on the bottom of the wing is high. Therefore, the vectors you get this this lift kind of thing going on. So you have high velocity low pressure and on the bottom of the wing you have low velocity high pressure now all I ask you to know right now is do you understand when it says high velocity low pressure low velocity high pressure <clears throat> and then you so you have vectors you have remember what vector is you have uh, a large vector going going up and you have a smaller vector going down so the larger vector going up will uh, when you add the two vectors you'll get a resultant vector which is actually up and that resultant vector is called lift so when I add those vectors the down vector and the up vector I get a sum vector and that vector going up is called lift and that's it and that's because of Bernoulli's principle which says now listen to it again listen to Bernoulli's principle again it says that uh, the 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 velocity of the flu of a fluid is inversely proportionate to the the pressure that is applied perpendicular to the flow of the fluid so you have a flow of fluid and then you have a pressure that is perpendicular to that flow right you get that if a velocity and then perpendicular to that velocity you have a vector which is pressure and they are indirect they're inversely proportionate so we have four vectors for a plane you have gravity going down or weight same thing you have lift going up. You have you have uh, drag is uh, is the left vector, and you have thrust, which is the right vector. So you have four main vectors that govern uh, flight of a plane. Obviously, the you know the major vector is going to be uh, lift. Otherwise, why bother? You know, take a bus. You know, so with an with an aeroplane, you need lift, and you achieve lift by the application of Bernoulli's principle, B E R N O U L L I apostrophe S Bernoulli. Now, a, a bird will have the same general shape of the wing, where you have you know the top of the wing is shaped so the airflow over the top of the wing goes a longer distance than the bottom of the wing that's it that's all there is to uh, Bernoulli's principle and you get this lift kind of thing going on so you know Bernoulli's principle is simply that when the fluid is moving fast the perpendicular vectors of pressure are are lower or smaller so the fact that the velocity of the fluid is inversely proportionate to the application of pressure perpendicular to that flow and that is Bernoulli's principle have a great day and goodbye